Hey, Ted here. I wanted to go over removing the transom assembly components on an Alpha 1. So this is the early version. What I'm going to do is remove the shift cable. I've already removed the hinge pins to make it a little easier. A little trick about removing the hose clamps. It's a nice little tool that I use. Um, and a pair of cable cutters for actually cutting through the cable. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do is kind of go over the removal of that shift lever. So that shift lever is gonna be replaced. Okay, we're gonna put a brand new one in there. And uh, what you do, pretty easy to take it apart, um, is to use a sharp chisel. So just take a sharp chisel, what you wanna do, I've already broken this one in half, but just to show you how you're gonna put it in there, line it up with a screw as such. You can actually see where I've actually chiseled it at that angle. And then just hit that with a hammer two or three times and bam, it will break that arm in half. So that's the first part of removing that. Now at that point, I can actually get that arm out of the way because that's gonna be replaced. Um, next is you can actually then take a screwdriver and wiggle this screw and take it out and I'll take that shaft out. The second part of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and I'll show you how to cut that cable and remove it. Okay, I've taken a pair of needle nose and I've slid this boot back so I can get that back a little further. So I'm gonna take my Nipex cutters. Cable. These are designed to cut steel cable. They are not designed for really anything else. They come in a different couple of different sizes, um, but this one is uh, perfect for the outside diameter of that cable. And you can cut right through it very easily, and I'll demonstrate that. This one actually sold uh, with a Matco part number piece, PWC8, so if you have a Matco dealer kicking around, you can order one through him. And I'm gonna put it around that cable, and I'm gonna cut that cable off, let's see. One part. Might take out a couple of chops to get through it. And at this point, with 99% of the cable cut through, I'll probably take a pair of diagonal cutters. There we go. And cut it in half. So now I got the cable cut in half. Okay, so I got the cable cut in half. Now what I'm what I can do is I can take this part right out. So this piece comes right out now. That's out of the way. So I've cut that off. The other thing I can do now is I can now take the rest of this cable out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that specialty socket that you can purchase or you can sacrifice a Craftsman 916 socket and just weld a nut on like I did. So I'm gonna back that, uh, that cable out. So let me unthread that next. So looks like I'm gonna get lucky. This one I think is gonna come out and not break off, which is good. So there's the end of the cable. And thread it out pretty nice here. Yeah. So that's the end. That's where I cut it off. And I've got the threads there. Now what I'm going to do anyway is I'm just going to run that tap in there real lightly just to clean those threads up a touch. And when I put the new cable on, I'm going to put some uh, pipe sealant on these threads because this is going to be underwater. You can use pipe sealant, perfect seal, non-hardening sealer on the threads. And that's why you need a pipe tap. Is I've taken an old half inch socket which fits over the tap. This is a quarter inch pipe tap. And I've just taped the tap to the socket and I leave that in the drawer. So that way I can just use that with a ratchet and I can chase those threads out real quick. Just, just so if there's any questions, I took it apart and pulled the socket off. So this is a quarter 18 national pipe tap, okay? So that's the size you need, which is what those threads are on the end of the cable when you want to chase those out. 
So what I do is I just basically take a standard 12 point old half inch socket I've got sticking around in my toolbox. And what's nice is it fits right in a 12 point, just like it was made for. And then just electric tape it together and it's a shortcut. You got it in your arsenal ready to go the next time. Okay, so I got that pipe tap started in there. I'm just gonna run it in there by hand just to clean those threads up a little bit. I don't wanna bury the tap in there. And then just back it out. Little compressed air, carb cleaner afterwards, get the threads cleaned up. I'm gonna wash this area out before I put the new cable in and everything. So this will be all cleaned up before I put the new cable in. So you can see that it's a little corroded, but the threads are in good shape, so. Get that freed up. Take that screw out. Just push it out with your finger. It is, as you can see, it's sleeved. Just pull that out. And you can just take that shaft right out now. So I'm just gonna wiggle that shaft and pull it straight down. And there's the old seal actually. The center of the seal actually came down with it. All right, I got it cleaned up a little bit, and what you don't want to forget is this little plastic washer. That little plastic washer, you have to put that on there when you're going to put the new arm on. So when you're getting ready to put this new arm on, don't forget to put that washer in there. Put a little grease on the washer, you know, this aids is a little bit less corrosion there. So what we have is we actually have that bushing that's left. And the seal was on the underside of the bushing. So that bushing goes most of the way down through. And what's left of the seal is right behind it. So even though the housing of the seal is very thin walled and it's stuck in there, it's going to come right out. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive this rest of this bushing out. So this is going to be the new one. We're going to install this. We're going to press this one back up through there. Talk about that shift shaft seal just a little bit. So let's look at that. So that shift shaft seal, the original one, like the one I took apart, here's another one in that seal and bushing that fits in here. So I have one I've taken out. So there were some questions um, that people were asking about the new design versus the old design. So the new design here replaces the old design, which is just the seal and a bushing that fits inside the housing. So I did get a pair of vernier calipers out and it's about 0 0.625, 0 0.624, somewhere in there. The original one's 0.623. So they're exactly, you know, within a thousandth, two thousandths of an inch, the same diameter. So this is tapered so that when you press this up into the housing, that it will go up nice and easily. So you're just gonna drive the old bushing out and what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a bolt that I made, a special bolt, and I put this back together. And basically what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this bolt to pull this back up into the housing. So when I get that set up and uh, reassembly and I'll show you that.